Hi, in this video, let's take a look at another battery-powered mini spot welder. I reviewed a DH20 spot welder a while ago and discussed in detail how a spot welder works. An Amazon seller contacted me shortly afterwards wanting me to review a different model of spot welder, so I thought why not? But what I received is actually a different model than what I thought I was getting. Now, this one looks almost identical to the one that I reviewed previously, as you can see here. These are the same size, and this is a DH20, and this is one I just received. From this side, you can see that they're actually identical, and the other side, they're slightly different with the DH20 with these uh, four LED indicators, whereas here we have an OLED display. But that's pretty much all the difference that there is between these two different spot welders. Well, at least I think we should uh, take a quick look to see if we can spot any other differences and uh, take a closer look at how well it works. As usual, I will leave a product link in the video description below. I do believe this is actually a DH30 spot welder as I have looked around on the internet and the DH30s seems to have this uh, OLED display here. But you can see if you look closely that on the case, you will see that we clearly indicated this is a DH20 spot welder. Although the supplied manual does say that this is a DH30 spot welder right here. So clearly there's a quite a bit of confusion here. Also, after playing around for a bit, it appears that the functionality described in the manual does not quite match up with reality. The brand name printed on the case here is Ago, but uh, on the Amazon site, it is marked as something else I cannot even pronounce. This is really a pity as it is something unfortunately you find in a lot of cheap Chinese products. Attention to detail and product consistency, in my opinion, is something these manufacturers and resellers should pay attention to. But other than these minor details, from a glance it does seem like this spot welder is relatively well made. Now let's power it on and explore a little bit. And to turn it on, I just uh, press and hold this button. Oh man, this is really noisy. One thing I do not like is the obnoxiously loud beeps these devices make. And I don't think there's any way for me to turn it off either. Anyway, that's just a minor issue. So as you can see here, we do have a relatively sharp screen here. And uh, by pressing these uh, buttons, by the way, right now, you can change the power level. Uh, the sound is really loud here. And uh, here's the first consistency. You can see that right now I'm at the maximum power level is showing as 30. Whereas if you read the manual, which I just uh, did a few minutes ago, apparently that uh, is showing that the maximum here is one to 20 adjustable. So clearly there's a lot of uh, discrepancy here. And uh, obviously if you're relying on the manual, you'll be disappointed here. Anyway, so let's get back to the user interface. It's quite intuitive after you get a hang of it. Basically, you just short press this, and it will change it to the next control. History count, and the next one is trigger value. I am not entirely sure what this uh, trigger value is, and there's no explanation on the manual either, but I assume this probably has something to do with uh, how long the delay is after both the tips touch the metal to trigger the weld. So the next one is off timer and I change it to uh, 60 minutes. When I first got it, the setting was defaulted to one minute, which is really annoying as it powers itself off after just one minute. And uh, every time it powers it on or off, it makes uh, that loud sound, which I don't quite uh, like. Anyway, so that's pretty much all the control there is to it. So I think now it's time for us to actually do a few welds. By the way, like the DH20, the welding current of this spot welder is supplied directly from the enclosed high discharge rate LiPo battery. And it is also triggered automatically with a short delay after both welding tips are in contact with the nickel strip. I discussed the mechanism how this works in my previous DH20 review video. Be sure to check that one out if you are curious. This specific DH30 comes with uh, two of these uh, welding tips and they're connected with these bullet connectors. So let's plug this in. And these are very, very tight. And that's to be expected due to the high current rating. So now when it's connected, we can 
try to weld a couple of uh, nickel strips here. And by the way, let me change the power down a little bit. Power, let's uh, change it to five. Yeah, this is really annoying. The beeping is getting old very quickly. So let's change it to five. And uh, let's uh, take a look. And you can see that the weld is relatively strong here and uh, no issue at all. And let's do another one. No problem at all. Now, when you weld this uh, to a battery, uh, what I found out is you do need to increase the power all the way to 30. And uh, otherwise it will not make a strong weld. Now let's uh, make a fuel weld on the actual battery itself. And uh, when I tried earlier, I noticed that in order to make a very secure weld, you need to make sure that the tips are relatively close together. So let's give it a shot. And let's do it again. So after this, we should be able to get a very secure weld. As you can see here, you need to really pull it to get it off. So that's pretty good. Now let's take a look at the welding current. We did that with the DH20 as well. So I just want to take a quick look here. For that, I'm using the chi weight meter in the inrush current measurement mode. See, it's 362 amps, and uh, let's do it again. I wonder if the duration affects the inrush current. Let's uh, turn it down a little bit. Let's try power of five. So this should be relatively short duration. Let's uh, give it a shot. Let me change it to inrush so we can see it here. You can see that the shorter the duration, actually the higher the inrush current. So right now we're measuring 435 amps. And let's give it another try. So it is suffice to say that the welding current is between 350 and 450 amps, as we have shown here. Next, I wanted to see what the generated pulse waveform looks like. And to do that, I'm going to connect the welding tips across this 0.1 ohm resistor and uh, using single shot to trigger the waveform on the oscilloscope. So let's take a look. Let me zoom in on the waveform a little bit. As you can see here, the current waveform looks slightly different than what we observed on the DH20. Instead of a one pilot pulse, we have two pilot pulses. Pilot pulses are used to pre-weld the materials together, and the main welding pulse generates enough heat to ensure that two pieces are welded together securely. So in this case, two pilot pulses probably helps the overall welding quality a little bit. And now, of course, we're at uh, the setting 5. So let me change it all the way to 1. Let's see what the shortest pause is. And uh, let's uh, give it a try. Here you can see that the main pause is roughly 10.8 milliseconds with the shortest duration. And each of the pilot pause is just under 7 milliseconds. Now let's uh, take a look at the longest pulse. So for that, I'm going to increase the power to 30. And now we're at 30. Let's uh, clear the cursor. Yeah, let's clear the cursor and uh, let's change the horizontal 
to 100 milliseconds because I think it's going to be relatively long. And uh, let's uh, do a single shot again. Let's run single shot. And as you can see here, at the highest setting, which is uh, 30, the welding duration is roughly three divisions, which is uh, 300 milliseconds. So now you get an idea of the welding duration choice that you have with this welder. If I remember correctly, on the DH20, the maximum welding duration is at around 150 milliseconds. Here you can see the maximum is 300, which is twice the duration on that DH20. This longer duration does give you better capability when welding over a large surface, for example, but it does put a lot of strain on the battery itself. Now let's take a quick look inside. One thing I forgot to mention before I open it up is that just like the DH20, this DH30 also can be used as a battery bank to charge your device. You can see the USB port right here. This USB port is for charging the DH30, and this one is for outputting as a battery bank. From a glance, the circuit board looks very similar to what we've got in the DH20. There are four high current MOSFETs in parallel. If you take a closer look though, you'll see that the microcontroller used here is different. If you recall, in the DH20, the microcontroller was an STC15W404. Here, an STC8G1K17 is used. Now, I could not find much information on this microcontroller, but it is suffice to say that it must also have a built-in ADC for monitoring the output voltage and detect whether the welding tips are in contact of the nickel strip. And here we have an IP5306, which is an integrated charging and discharging controller, which is obviously responsible for charging the battery and also provide the 5 volts USB output as a battery bank. Unlike the design in the DH20, an OLED LCD is used here for the user interface. If you take a look at the connection here and uh, look at the silk screen, you will see that the communication protocol between the LCD and the mainboard microcontroller is I2C. Because of the high current, notice that the drain and source side of the MOSFETs are further beefed up via these copper bus bars. Comparing to the DH20, this board has one additional bus bar here for increased current carrying capability. Now let's take a look at the other side. As we expected, there's not much, only the battery is here. The soldering job for the battery is not that great. If you look closely, you can see that each of the tab is only secured by these two soldering spots. It could use a little bit more solder, in my opinion. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to hit that like button, and remember to subscribe to the channel. I will catch up with you next time.